What's up you guys? I'm currently live on TikTok. So if you guys don't follow my TikTok, it is at B-J-O-S-I-C. I'm doing a 12th house support group live. You guys love the last one so much. So we're going to do another one today. So let's see what questions that people have for us today. If you guys want to do your own natal chart reading or your progressed natal chart reading, all of that information is going to be in the description box below. You'll find it on my website underneath the readings tab. So in your natal chart, you either have 12 house placements or you have your 12th house occupied by a sign. So you want to go either on Astro Cafe or if you want to go on Astro Seek, Astro.com, type in your birth information, your date, your time, and your place of birth. And then it's going to tell you what sign you have in the 12th house or it'll tell you if you have any 12th house placements. 12th house neptune and aquarius okay so with the outer planets the sign in here is going to be the overall generation okay so neptune and aquarius is the overall generation is going to share that sign it's something that you guys don't see clearly collectively okay as a generation and then you're going to have the energy within yourself as well okay so neptune and aquarius overall doesn't see the area of futuristic thinking ideas clearly okay sometimes it has like very futuristic ideas but they might not know how to ground it, for example, on the physical plane and in the physical reality. So this is something that the overall generation is going to struggle with. Neptune in the 12th house is amazing for creativity, creative projects, creative ventures, music, even inventions. It depends on the entire natal chart, okay? But Neptune in the 12th house is very good at these things. What I will say is Neptune in the 12th house is very prone to nuance and energy, okay? So you guys might pick up on when someone's mood changes or when you guys are out and like the vibe shifts, you guys are gonna pick up on that instantaneously. Most people won't notice that. Let's say if you're with somebody else who is psychic or intuitive, they'll see it maybe on your face that you are, your mood has changed because you're picking up on something. So for Neptune in the 12th house people, it's like, you know, your environment is going to be really important to you. Who you live with is going to be important, okay? Because you're absorbing. Neptune in the 12th house is always absorbing. And the Neptune in the 12th house can go into sometimes maybe addiction or escapism of some sort. So important to keep that in mind. 12th house in Aries. So this is another thing. So when you guys have 12th house in your natal chart, you might have a particular placement in the 12th house. Thanks so much for the likes, you guys. I guess the video out there. And if you guys are new here, check out my YouTube channel. It's called Barbara Talks. I have a whole 12th house playlist on there, okay? I will get to everyone's questions. I'm just going in order. So you can have placements in the 12th house, but you can also have your 12th house being occupied by something, okay? So when you have your 12th house in Aries, you unconsciously behave like an Aries, okay? So for example, L, I'm curious to know if your first house is also in Aries, maybe it's in the Placidus system, or is it your first house, so is your rising in Taurus? Sometimes people have a first house in a sign, but sometimes people might say to you, for example, oh, you give me Aries vibes. It's because you unconsciously behave like an Aries, whatever you have in your 12th house. So 12th house is going to tell you a lot. It's going to tell you about how you unconsciously behave in your situation. You might unconsciously behave like an Aries. You might be very competitive without realizing that you're competitive, okay? You might be very much someone who wants to be the best or you wanna be number one or you wanna be a manager or you wanna be a leader. That's that 12th house in Aries. Or you might be explosive. There's the shadow aspects of, two, of that too, right? Where it's like you might go into the shadow aspects of that particular house without realizing or that particular sign because it's hidden, right? So when something is hidden and it's unconscious, the energy still has to come out, but it's usually gonna come out maybe in like a shadow type of way. So for example, you might maybe explode sometimes without realizing like where is this coming from, but you have to kind of learn how to do conflict resolution and conflict management. So that's some ways that it can manifest. You said you have Taurus rising, you have your 12th house in Aries and you have it in Mars. Oh my gosh, thanks so much for the likes, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Make sure you guys check out my YouTube channel. It's called Barbara Talks. Venus in Aquarius in the 12th house. That's really interesting because when it comes to relationships, you're gonna be very different in terms of your perception. You might be a little bit more detached or you might need a little bit more space or you might need a little bit more you know, space to be yourself and who you are as a person. But then the 12th house comes in here and it's like, boom, you might have a lot of past life enemies coming through as lovers or coming through as friends, for example, right? So what's interesting, actually, psychically, what's coming through for you is you might attract a lot of codependent people who are kind of teaching you to break out and still be yourself and still be true to who you are and still be that Venus and Aquarius, like, se you know, separate person, like still have your own identity. That's something that's coming through. Let's see what else you guys are saying in here. 
Thanks so much for the likes, you guys. Welcome to all the people joining. I'm answering 12 house questions. This is a 12 house support group. So if you guys have any questions about your 12 house, 12 house in general, I'm going in order. I will get to everyone. No worries. Yeah, sometimes like, okay, you guys can sometimes look at the 12th house as like carried over energy from a past life and you're closing it out in this lifetime, okay? So when you have Venus in the 12th house, you're closing out anything to do with your relationships in this particular lifetime. It's something that maybe you didn't get a chance to complete in a past life. For example, you're coming through in this lifetime to close out that particular planet, okay? So that's another way you guys can look at the 12th house as well. Can I tell you about Gemini in the 5th house in connection to kids? Yeah. So that's something you guys knew in your natal charts overall is you guys can see what kind of like what the vibe of your children is going to be like. Okay. So for the first child, it's the fifth house. Okay. For the second child, you're looking at the fifth house and the seventh house together. Okay. The third child is going to be the fifth house and the ninth house. I have a video on this on my YouTube channel. It is called, I think like what will your future kids be like or something of that sort. It's going to be in the miscellaneous playlist. If you guys want to know more and my YouTube channel is called Barbara talks. Okay. So having Gemini in the fifth house, you might have very chatty kids. Your kids might be very intelligent. They might be very funny. They might be very like hyperactive and want to do this and want to do that. Okay. So that's kind of the vibe. It's the overall vibe of the children. So let's say you were to have a second child, right? The undertone of the Gemini energy would be there, but then you're going to look at your seventh house. Okay. Also in conjunction to the Gemini in the fifth house. Hey, you said you're a cancer moon in the 12th house. Yeah, that is intense. Cause that's like also like maternal, like issues with the mother coming through in this particular lifetime, cancer moon in the 12th house. It could also be like past life abandonment issues, maybe like in the past life, like a parent abandoned. You usually can't, usually the moon does deal with the mother, but if it's not the mother, you can look at the dominant feminine role in your life as well. So cancer struggles with abandonment and they struggle with neglect a lot of the time, especially if you guys have it in the moon, you're going to struggle with emotional abandonment or emotional neglect. So in this situation, you might struggle to express yourself. Okay. You might struggle to express your emotions. You might struggle to kind of feel like, you know, your emotions are being heard. You might be the type of person that wants to listen to everybody and help everybody, but who's helping you, right? That's that cancer energy. So sometimes cancer goes into like nurturing everybody, right? But they want to be nurtured. And because it's the 12th house, past life related. Also your psychic gifts and abilities are carried over from past life. You might be clear sentient. You might pick up on people's vibes. You might pick up on people's energies, right? And the cancer moon is always absorbing. This is important to understand with cancer energy, it's always absorbing. You can't turn it off. You just have to learn how to manage it. Let's see, I'm just going back up. What else are you guys seeing in here? Saturn and Cancer and the 12th house. Very, very interesting because it's Saturn and then you have it in Cancer and it's in the 12th house. Saturn and Cancer can be a sign of a writer sometimes. So you might be gifted in terms of writing, the written word. Saturn overall though, is the area that you're going to be restricted in. So you might be restricted when it comes to your spirituality. The expression of your spirituality usually comes from the father. If it's not the father, it's going to be the dominant masculine role in your life. And then later on, it's going to perpetuate throughout your life. Okay. So it'll be maybe your teachers. It'll be your, maybe your managers, your bosses. So for example, in your situation, let's say you were maybe sent off to a boarding school just like a random example and it's like maybe in that boarding school they were teaching a specific religion that conflicted maybe with your own spiritual beliefs that can maybe be that saturn and the 12th house playing out right where it's like it's restricting this area for you now the good thing about saturn is as time goes on and you mature because saturn is a planet of maturity as you mature right saturn kind of starts to bless you in this area and you start to expand let's say through that area in terms of like mastering it is really what that is okay so saturn in the 12th house is kind of here to master let's say spirituality you guys are here to master the higher mind and you know it's all about like that oneness energy and like really going with the feeling even in Intuition, for example, okay, and then Saturn and Cancer. That's a little bit of a struggle. Saturn and Cancer growing up. Maybe the roles were reversed when the parent with the parents. Maybe when you have Saturn and Cancer, something that can take place is like it could have maybe been an upbringing where you know it was cold, like there wasn't maybe focus on emotions, or maybe you were brought up by let's say like an older parent, or like maybe the grandparents like raised you. There's always something here with Saturn and Cancer where it's like. The home life, the home energy is restricted in one way, shape, or form. Maybe you didn't get the type of home you wanted, right? On like a soul level, right? Maybe there was something, maybe everything was there, but maybe you wanted it to be maybe more emotionally open, for example, right? So it's kind of like, this is the vibe. I'm going in order, so I'll get to everyone. Let's see what else you guys saying here. Tips for 
12th house Virgo sun and Virgo Jupiter. Okay, Virgo Jupiter, you know what's interesting? I'm doing my, my Jupiter series currently, I'm recording it, and I did Jupiter Virgo the other day. And what I was thinking about with Jupiter in a natal chart, what's interesting with Jupiter in a natal chart is that this energy is sometimes the area where you can quote unquote get away with things, okay, in that particular area. So for example, Jupiter Virgo, first of all, they're gonna be lucky when it comes to work and finding jobs, okay? So you're always gonna have luck when it comes to that. Like you'll be able to find a job in one month, two months. Obviously it depends on the rest of your natal chart. This is always depending on the rest of your natal chart. But another thing that I was thinking about for Jupiter Virgo is like, these people can be very good at their jobs, for example, but they can also push the boundaries. Sometimes Jupiter is the area where you can kind of like push the boundaries in as well. But like, you know, you can only push them for so long, for example, right? So let's say Jupiter in Virgo is going to be able to push the boundaries in their job. For example, maybe you're late all the time. I'm not recommending for you to do this, but maybe you do this without realizing that you do it because you're lucky, right? Like maybe your manager doesn't notice, maybe your manager doesn't say anything, but maybe they say that for the other person that doesn't have Jupiter Virgo. That's kind of the vibe, okay? So that's Virgo in Jupiter. Let's see, hold on, I'm just going back up. It went down. Also another thing, okay, so with Virgo in there, you're gonna be very, very good. I'm curious to know, let me know if Virgo's occupying your overall 12th house, okay? But overall the vibe with let's say like a 12th house Jupiter is like you're gonna be blessed when it comes to your creativity and it's usually passed over from a past life. So you might be blessed with like your psychic gifts, your creativity, your like artistic abilities, musical even, you might be musically talented. Now something that can take place when you have the Jupiter in the 12th house and it's usually from a past life, okay? So this is something that takes place with the 12 house placements overall in a natal chart. It's usually carried over from past life. So let's say like your ability to make money, let's say because it is Jupiter Virgo, with the ability to make money, it could be carried over knowledge from a past life. You're closing out in this lifetime or, you know, kind of reaping the rewards of something that maybe you weren't able to do in a past life. Maybe in a past life you worked hard, you didn't get to reap the rewards. Boom, Jupiter's coming through in this lifetime for you to expand that area to bless you maybe with abundance and wealth. Thank you, thank you for the follows. Hey Vish, how are you doing? If you guys are new here, check out my YouTube channel, it's called Barbara Talks. I have a whole playlist on the 12th house. You said, oh my God, yeah, that's true TBH because every day you come up with a new plan and then you never realize them. Yeah, that's a struggle. So that's the overall struggle. Thank you. That's the overall struggle for the 12th house overall is that they have a lot of dreams and sometimes they don't know how to ground them. So my recommendation for 12th house people is figure out a practical approach in terms of getting your goals and your ambitions because if you don't, you'll attract people into your life who do and then they might be opportunists, for example, because not everyone has the best intentions and then 12th house people think that everyone has the best intentions because 12th house people are always like in the crown and in the love vibrations and everything's good and everything's high vibe. But, you know, people could see your manifesting potential, right? They can see that you're able to manifest things so they might kind of latch onto you energetically so you manifest for them. But that can also go in the positive way where it's like you guys might bring people into your life where those people are manifesting for you, right? So it depends what way you guys go in terms of the energy, okay? This is important to keep in mind. But I've noticed like a lot of the time, let's say singers in the past who have an abundance of 12 house energy, like a lot of the time, 12 house people operate best when there's a team that's working with them or either they're working with a team or a team is working with them. Because when it comes to like the... When it comes to the uh, physical reality, it is definitely a challenge, okay? It's definitely a challenge for the 12 house people because they don't, first of all, they don't care about the physical plane. They just kind of want to bask in the creative aspects of life, in the psychic aspects of life and these types of things, okay? So just some things to keep in mind. Hey, how are you guys doing? What's going on? I'm just going back up. I will get to everyone's questions. You said Taurus rising. You're welcome, Mar. You said, what about Chiron in the 12th house? Okay, wherever you guys have Chiron in your natal chart is the area that you guys are healing through in this particular lifetime, okay? So Chiron in the 12th house, you can kind of look at it as like, you're bringing over things that you're healing into this lifetime. I'm curious to know what sign you have in there. It's gonna give us a little bit more insight, but Chiron in the 12th house, you're kind of healing things that are metaphysical, spiritual. Maybe in this lifetime, you're finally able to express your psychic gifts and abilities and your intuition and how you feel about things. Or maybe you're finally able to be creative in this lifetime. That's kind of like the overall vibe, okay? Maybe you're able to express yourself musically, okay? In this lifetime, maybe you wanted to do that, you weren't able to, boom, and it's healing, right? Wherever you have Chiron, you are healing through that particular area in this current lifetime. 
used to ignore red flags. Yeah, so for people who are learning to train their intuition, my number one recommendation is the first thought you have about anything is your intuition, okay? And then anything to follow is gonna be the mind, right? Or like the ego coming through to either convince you or give you doubt or, you know, tell you you can't do it for this reason or whatever it is. It's not logical to do it this way, these types of things, okay? So the more you start to listen to that first thought, it's that gut feeling, that's really what it is. Everyone's equipped with this, right? So the more that you listen to it, the more that you trust it, the more it kind of becomes louder and you start to ignore the kind of egoic aspect of things where it's like, you shouldn't do it because of this, this societal reason, or, you know, maybe you're just really, usually it's also comfort sometimes I've noticed. Sometimes it tends to be like comfort reasons, like don't try that new thing or don't go to that place or, you know, every Wednesday you do this, continue doing that, right? So that's something to keep in mind. You said it was crazy. Oh my gosh, that's wild. Let's see what else you guys think here. Hiding in our subconscious. Yes, that's the 12th house. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the people joining. I'm answering 12 house questions. It's my 12 house support group. So we're going to talk about all things 12 house in this live. If you guys are new, check out my YouTube channel. It's called Barbara Talks. I talk about all astrology things on there. But one time we were talking, we were like, let's do a 12 house support group. People loved it. So now I'm answering questions about the 12 house. Is sign in the 12 house always a sign of an absent father? Yes. So it could be mental, emotional, physical absence, okay? So that's the thing. He could have maybe worked all the time or maybe there were substances or maybe he was just checked out or maybe he was just watching TV all the time or maybe he was just not at home for whatever reason or maybe he left or maybe he crossed out early. It's always a sign, okay, in one way, shape or form. And something that I've noticed with Sun and the 12 house people, now I haven't obviously seen enough charts to say this is rule of thumb. There's so many people in the world, obviously, right? But Sun in the 12th house people tend to have Saturn retrograde in their natal charts as well, which is also an absence of a father figure. So when you have the absence of the father, which is the dominant masculine role, what does this mean? You struggle with your masculine energy within, okay? So you might struggle with boundaries. You might struggle with being a go-getter. You might struggle with perseverance. You might struggle with being a leader. You might struggle with starting things, you know, having the belief in the self, the confidence, you might struggle with all these things, okay? So you always want to see, you always want to see how the energy can manifest within you, okay? It's crazy how some substances are to blame for spiritual awakenings. Yeah, that tends to happen for some people, <laughs> especially again, if you're a 12 house person. 12 house people are always interested in being out of body. What does it feel like? Like that's what the 12 house person is. It's always about feeling. What does that feel like? And then you have that curiosity for more and connection and connection to something greater, right? That's that 12 house. But what I will say though, I always say this when I talk about 12 house, anything or overall like water placements, like stay away from substances. Like because you're already psychic and you're intuitive, you open yourself up energetically even more. And the way that I see it is like quote unquote aggravating the psychic muscle. So it's like you're already psychically open. And like what's interesting is as a 12 house person, you should actually focus on grounding and grounding the psychic information, not spending more time in the crown. So sometimes these things shoot you into the crown even more because you're going out of body. 12 house people are always kind of like, I literally want to say they're literally like out of body like 70% of the time, just like naturally. Oh, that's so awesome. Yay. I'm glad. I know I go, um, I'm both on YouTube and I am on TikTok as well. Mercury and Venus in the 12th house in Libra. Mercury in the 12th house can be a singer. I've seen that or singers or poets. It's going to be romantic though. So it has to be something to do with like poetry or like, it depends obviously on the rest of the natal chart, but I've seen singers have this just like poetic types of singers, singers who sing about love or people who write about love. And then you have Venus in the 12th house. So you might go through like you know, experiences when it comes to relationships and you might write about them, for example, or you might write poetry about them or you just like my journal about them. That's kind of like that vibe. And then Mercury in the 12th house can also speak in riddles. Okay. So not only are you a poet, you can also speak in riddles and then you have Mercury and Libra in the 12th house. You can speak in double speak. So it's like something you say can have two meanings and it's just kind of like almost like just a gift that you have, right? You're also going to be super, super intelligent. Let's see what else you guys saying in here. Twelve house Venus and Pluto in Scorpio. A lot of twelve house Venus people in the house today. So twelve house Venus, it's usually they say passed over lovers or sorry, passed over enemies into lovers into this lifetime. If it's not lovers, it'll be your friends. 
So it's like the 12th house is hidden, right? It's also the house of hidden enemies and just like the thing is it's karmic, right? So when you have a 12th house Venus, it's like all your relationships in one way, shape or form are some form of like closure in a way you're closing it out in this particular lifetime. You can look at it that way. Anytime you have 12th house, you're closing that thing out in this current state lifetime, okay? Then you said you have Pluto and Scorpio. Do you also have Venus in Scorpio, Becca? Let's see. Yeah, Venus in the 12th house is very karmic. Oh, absolutely. It is very, it's karmic. Like, it can be your lovers. It can be your friends. Like, it's all karmic when you have Venus in the 12th house. All your relationships are karmic. And then you might have a lot of relationships or you might go through a lot of, like, friendships or, like, a lot of interpersonal relationships. Like, that's what Venus is. Venus is the place of relationships. So you might have Venus in Libra. One of you guys had Venus in Libra, which is a nice placement, but then you have it in the 12th house and it's also hidden. So it's like, for example, Venus being in Libra is like a good placement for Venus because Venus is ruled by Libra, right? Where it's like, you could be very, you know, like when it comes to your relationships, it could, you know, flow, for example, but then you have it in the 12th house, so it's hidden. So it's like, there could also maybe be a lot of fears because the 12th house is also about fears. So there could maybe be a lot of fears when it comes to relationships or phobias or like subconscious things that come to the surface. It's anyone that gets close to you, friends, families, and lovers, mostly feminine energy. Do you have it in, uh, do you have it in the sign of Scorpio? Because you mentioned you have Pluto in Scorpio. Let me know if your Venus is in Scorpio too in the 12th house. Cancer moons in the 12th house. There was another one of you guys earlier in here as well. So Cancer moon, okay, here's the thing. Cancer moon, especially in the moon sign, when Cancer is in the moon, this is the most abandoned quote unquote sign, right? First of all, the, the Cancer energy is the most abandoned sign of the zodiac. So they always have abandonment energy attached to them. Sometimes it's not even from this lifetime. Sometimes it's from a past life. Cancer moons could have had orphan past lives or they carry like orphan energy within them, like things like this, okay? So maybe it's not something that happened in this lifetime, but maybe you were, let's say, emotionally neglected when you have a Cancer moon or maybe you were emotionally abandoned or maybe you had a lot of emotions and the parent usually the moon is the mother if it's not the mother it'll be the dominant feminine role in your life maybe this person didn't know how to hold space for your emotions right and it's like it's a very sensitive moon sign and then it's in the 12th house hidden right so it's once again hidden maybe you struggle to express your emotions sometimes the cancer moon in the 12th house is like connected to like the mother or just like the emotional world being carried over from a past life like there could be an energy of this as well where it's like maybe you have unresolved emotional issues may probably connected to abandonment because it is in cancer from a past life you've carried it over to this lifetime to close out that cycle you might struggle with codependency you might struggle with fear of being alone these types of things you might have to work on in this current lifetime and also what I'm going to say is you're going to have gifts, right? Oh, there's a few of you guys moon and cancer in a shell house. Yeah, you're going to have like very psychic and intuitive gifts that are carried over from a past life. So after you resolve the lower versions of the cancerian nature, which is abandonment and feeling abandoned and always wanting to create a family feel everywhere you go or your colleagues feel like family or, you know, the town you live in, like when you get over that, you'll be able to kind of start maneuvering in terms of that cancerian nature, which is the intuition, okay, the depths in this way. Exactly, inherited psychic gifts and abilities. Let's see what else you guys are saying in here. You're a Scorpio, Venus, and Western and in Vedic, you have Libra, Venus, and you feel after your 12th house perfection. Yeah, Scorpio, Venus is intense. But it progresses, which is nice. If you guys look at your progress chart, you can see whether or not some of your internal placements have progressed. Oh my gosh, you have a Pisces Mars too. I've noticed with Pisces Mars, sometimes these people kind of bring people into their life to help them manifest their goal or their dream. Like that's the thing, Pisces and 12th house energy is expansive. You need to either be working with a team or a group of people or having like people around you that are handling maybe the earthly tasks. Like that's how I would say this energy like basically manifest in the best possible outcome is in that way where it's like, you know, the Piscean 12 house person is the creative, right? And then you have people around you who are helping you execute your goal. But unfortunately in the world that we live in, there's a lot of opportunists, but you can do that for yourself as well, right? It's that masculine and feminine energy within. You can kind of like be aware, like, oh my gosh, okay, I struggle in being a go-getter or creating a schedule or a container for myself. Okay, how can I fix that about myself? So you don't have to depend on other people. Welcome to all the people joining. 
I'm just going back up to find my spot. Vish says, your chart is weird because you have 12 house Leo and your Venus is in Leo, but it says your Venus is in the 11th house. That's probably in the maybe Placidus system that you're looking at. That does tend to happen sometimes. I've seen it in people's natal charts. What sign do you have in your Venus? Oh, you said Venus is in Leo. So 12th house Leo is a very interesting placement because it's like Leo wants to be seen. Okay, they want to be on that stage, but 12th house is hidden. So you might have to push through this, okay? This is the thing for the 12th house. Leo energy, you might have to push through that fear maybe of being seen or the shadows of Leo when it comes to maybe, you know, fear of rejection, that's something that Leo struggles with or like not knowing who they are or like their identity and like these types of things. Let's see what else are you guys seeing in here. If you're new here, check out my YouTube channel. It's called Barbara Talks. Oh my gosh, so many Venus in the 12th house people. Lilith in the 12th house. So you want to look at the shadows of the 12th house. And this is what you're basically closing out in this lifetime because Lilith is our dark side. You want to look at the dark side of the 12th house. Unconscious, subconscious, substances. I would always say stay away from substances, especially if you have it in the Lilith. Thank you for the likes and thank you for the shares, you guys. Also, Lilith in the 12th house could be anything to do with escaping, right? So it could be substances, but it could be overthinking or escaping through the mind or procrastination is a big one for Lilith in the 12th house or 12th house in the shadow. Procrastination is a huge one, kind of like passively, you know, going through life and kind of hoping that people are going to do things for you or get things done for you. That's kind of a struggle also for that Piscean slash 12th house energy, okay? But when you have Lilith in the 12th house, it could be this. Also, Lilith in the 12th house, you kind of want to see what else are the shadows of that 12th house energy, okay? Not being grounded, being too much in the crown, escaping all the time. Like maybe you just live a life of escapism in one way, shape, or form. Like that's something that can take place as well. Escapism is on a range, okay? Keep that in mind. It could be shopping. It could be constantly scrolling as a big one these days, okay? Oh my gosh, Derica, thanks for sharing. I'm happy that you're here. How are you? I'm just going back up. Leo Sun, Leo Moon, Leo Mercury, and Leo Mars all in the 12th house. Any info to share on this? You have Leo Sun, Moon, Mercury, Mars on the 12th house. You know what's really interesting? I don't know if this is true. This is just something that I was psychically seeing when I was looking at someone's natal chart. I was seeing once that the more 12th house energy that a person has in their natal chart, the more times they've kind of been down here. So like overall 12 house people are all old souls. Doesn't matter how many 12 house placements you have, you're still kind of redoing it, old soul vibes over it. You've done it so many times, you're kind of over it, right? But sometimes what the struggle is with the 12 houses, they come down here and they've acquired a lot of spiritual knowledge, but it's a very physical plane and it's a very earthly plane. Again, I don't know if this is facts. This is just something that I have observed. So from what I've observed is like the 12 house people tend to escape through spirituality, but they still haven't mastered the physical plane. Sometimes you have to master the physical plane, right? Something here, because the thing is, is like, this is the way that I see it. I don't know, again, if this is true, this is just from what I've observed. I kind of feel like we keep coming back down here because on a soul level, we feel like we don't complete something or something didn't get completed or maybe you wanted to do one thing and then you came down here, you were distracted with all these other things. You didn't get to complete the thing or maybe there's a new thing you wanted to do and all these things. So the more tall house you have, to me, it just feels like you keep coming back, you keep coming back down here to finish something, complete something. You didn't get to complete it. And then in turn with all of that, you come here and then you create more karma and then you create more karmic webs. So it's like the struggle for the tall house person is like, it takes a long time to unweave, first of all, the karmic webs to try to get to like the core of what the soul really wants to do. That's the way that I see it. I feel like for 12 house people, the ultimate goal is to see what does the soul truly want to do and what is the soul's goal, right? Like what is it that the soul wants to complete? Because I feel like once you complete it, you don't come back down here anymore. And through that, you're clearing the karma and all these types of things. But sometimes there's just so much karma. Sometimes when I see a bunch of 12 house energy in someone's natal chart, to me, it's like a clean up lifetime, right? You're cleaning up a bunch of karmas, a bunch of things at once. So it's gonna be intense. When you're clearing karma, it's going to be intense. It's going to be hardcore. But the other side is very positive, right? Like it's very prosperous. You've cleared the karma. You're in like finally those high vibrations that the 12 house person dreams of. Welcome to all the people who are joining. Hey, how are you guys doing? You agreed. Thank you for confirming. The earth is proving grounds. 
I agree. Saturn and the 12 house people old souls. Absolutely. Yes, Derek, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that you're good too. Fear of rejection and identity. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like sometimes the signs, I see them also as a potential. Okay. So sometimes I see signs in a natal chart as a potential or the natal chart. Sometimes I see it as a potential. It's like you could go into this energy. Sometimes I see it that way too. So it's like the Leo energy has the potential of being this shining star and confident and everyone loves you and you're on a stage and maybe you're making people laugh or you're starting something or you're acting or you're an entrepreneur. Like the potential is there, but then comes the shadow of that sign. Sometimes that you have to push through and work through to reach that potential. So shadows of Leo, fear of rejection, fear of not being accepted for who you are, self-worth issues, anything solar plexus chakra-esque. Like, yes, Leo deals with the heart, but sometimes I feel like they deal with the solar plexus chakra as well. You know, boundaries sometimes, or like fear of acceptance, like maybe fear of even being seen. Sometimes people don't want the responsibility of being seen. It's like on a range, right? So there's a lot of things that are happening. Welcome to all the people joining. If you're new here, check out my YouTube channel. It's called Barbara Talks. Confidence, absolutely. It's the Leo. Like Leo is here to like, you know, when you look at the lion, right? It's here to roar. It's here to shine, right? It's here to be who they are. You know, it's all about the self in that way, but sometimes they might struggle to express that. Obviously depends on the rest of your natal chart as well. You said your exes, Sun, Venus, and Mercury fell into your 12th house. Yikes. Yikes indeed. <laughs> That's a lot of karma clearance and karmic clearance. Let's see. I'm just going back up. Pisces, Mars. Oh my gosh, guys, thanks so much for the likes. You have Lilith and Leo. Yeah, so all those things that I mentioned about the shadow of Leo, you might have to integrate within yourself and work on within yourself. You have to ground yourself. Yeah, it's hard because for the 12 house person, it's first of all more fun. It's more interesting to be in the crown, right? The crown chakra in the mind and the imagination and the psychic realms. It is more fun. It's safer. Sometimes it's a safety thing. Sometimes it's a comfort thing. Sometimes it's an escapism thing because the earth plane is very flat. It's very like one dimensional. It's also very hard to ground things in the physical reality as well. It takes time. The 12 house person doesn't like how much time it takes because in the higher realms, things don't take that much time you know but down here there's resistance and there's wounds and there's all these things that could be preventing you from getting there but it's like sometimes you have to be persistent and you have to continuously put yourself out there and focus on your goal so that's another thing with the 12th house it's like because the third eye chakra and the visualization is so strong if you guys pair it with going after your goal and putting it into action you guys will bring it through that's the thing you will bring it through but because it's so expansive it's so hard to reel it back in, right? Because it's like, I wanna do this and I wanna do that. And then along the way, this thing happens and that's interesting. And then this is interesting, it's expansive. So it's like, sometimes the energy struggles to like reel it in is really what that is and like streamline it into like maybe one thing that you guys wanna do. Maybe it's music, for example, or maybe it's art or maybe it is singing, like whatever it is. Maybe it's writing, it depends, you know? Hey, how are you guys doing? You said you came out of the closet. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Good for you, congratulations. Let's see, I'm just going back up. Your sun has Jupiter in the 12th house in Aries. So actually he could have leadership qualities that he has carried over into this lifetime. I'm actually curious to know if you're still in the room, if he's interested in being like an athlete or athletics or something of that sort. That's just what I'm psychically seeing just by reading that because it's like Jupiter in Aries. It's expanding the Aries area of these things, right? Like you know, being an athlete, being number one, being the best. It is in the 12th house though, so it could be a little bit of a struggle to actually pull it out. Depends also, does he actually have Aries in the 12th house or is it maybe in the first house? But that's the overall vibe, okay? So it's kind of like he's closing out the cycle in this lifetime, that's that. And he's also closing out the cycle of abundance and money in this lifetime, but it's money through the self. It's money maybe through athletics or through sports or maybe being, through, or maybe being a coach or an entrepreneur or maybe having your own business all Aries types of things. It's really through the self though, okay? And then it's carried over probably gifts from a past life. That's another way that I see the 12th house sometimes. Again, it's something that you either didn't get to complete in a past life, you're closing out in this lifetime, some sort of knowledge that you gain in a past life, but sometimes you have to clear through the unconscious. That's a struggle, okay? Unconscious fears, you know, limiting beliefs, programming, all these types of things.
Thank you, thank you, thank you for the follows. Make sure you guys check out my YouTube channel. Aries in the 12th house is like a slow burn. We don't become confident until you find your identity. Absolutely. Coro by Jupiter, of course, you're expansive, amazing. North node in Leo in the 12th house. Really, really interesting. So your south node would be in Aquarius and it's in the sixth house. Your past life could have been maybe more grounded in terms of your healing abilities. Maybe you were a doctor, for example, or maybe you thought of some sort of new medicine thing because Aquarius is like very futuristic thinking. This time, your life purpose, because north node is your life purpose. You come through without Leo in the 12th house. So a lot of the karma here is breaking through the fear of being seen, I feel like, for you in this particular lifetime. The fear of being seen or the fear of expressing who you truly are or maybe like worry that people won't accept you or that people won't like you. Because the thing is, here's another thing with Leo energy, you guys, what I've been thinking about. Leo energy, this is a struggle with them, okay? Because Leo feeds off of like the admiration that they get and a lot of the time they want that crowd. Like they know because it is the sun, right? That they are that expansive. Like they know that they're here to serve some sort of maybe crowd or make people laugh or again, do theater or whatever it is, comedy. Sometimes pol politicians have Leo in there as well. I've seen politicians with Leo, but whatever it is, basically what's happening with Leo energy is like, from the admiration of the crowd, they're kind of gathering that energy. It's giving them the confidence to continue shining like, right? So like, let's say you guys are a comedian and then people are laughing and you're like, oh my gosh, like I'm funny. I'm gonna like make more jokes, for example, right? But the struggle with Leo, okay? The struggle with Leo is when there's no crowd, the beginning, okay? So that's the struggle with Leo energy because it's like sometimes Leo might get discouraged because they don't get the crowd right away, you know? And that's kind of sometimes maybe where the pride might come in. They might struggle to st not start like they'll start but they might not get that result that they're seeking right away for that admiration or for that crowd that they're like you know feeding off of right so it's like you just have to keep pushing through until you get to kind of your desired outcome is really what that is and it's like sometimes leo wants to be at the top right away they want that again i'm just using the crowd example in the situation but it can be anything right maybe it's a job maybe it's a role maybe it's like you want to be in a movie like or a theater or whatever it is singing like whatever it is right and it's like you know, it's chicken and the egg, you know, it's like they want it right away, but because they don't have it, they don't want to put themselves out there. They don't want to be in the beginning. They want to be right away at the top on the throne right away. But sometimes it takes, you know, building to get there. Leos are afraid of criticism too. It's really interesting. I can see that because it's like, I can see Leos really taking criticism to heart because it's kind of like it hits the solar plexus chakra. You know what I mean? It's like, it hits that like self-worth. And I'm not saying that they're hanging, you know, by a thread when it comes to the self-worth. It's just a lot of, it's almost like how some people are sometimes extroverts, right? So it's like they feed off of the energy, the admiration that people give them. So it's like when they're not getting that, they're like, am I not doing something right? Should I do it like this? Like that's something, something that can take place. The eclipse was conjunct your 19th 11th house Libra moon is Libra in your 11th house overall. It was definitely an intense eclipse for sure this weekend. Moon conjunct Pluto in Libra 12th house. You and your mom are always at odds. She has a Libra sun. That makes sense because it's like, this is your chart, right? You have moon conjunct Pluto in Libra in the 12th house and then she's a Libra sun. That makes sense because first of all, moon conjunct Pluto is power struggles when it comes to women or people who are in feminine roles or your mother, okay? Because the moon does tend to do with the mother. There's that aspect of, of it. And then your Pluto conjuncting her Libra is like bringing out her shadows, right? It's bringing out like the shadow aspects of her or like maybe being a mirror for her shadows or just like, cause it's affecting her ego, right? Cause the sun is the ego, it's affecting her identity and your Pluto is coming through to trigger that. That's sometimes what happens with like parent and children dynamics. The insecurity subsides when they no longer need to perform for other people. Love that. Let's see what else you guys see in here. Thank you for the ice cream cone. Mostly living in your three higher chakras. That's awesome. I mean, it's it's all great as long as you can ground it. Do you know what I mean? As long as you can figure out a way to anchor whatever it is that you're trying to bring through. Because usually like another thing for 12 house people, the struggle for them is like sometimes you're trying to anchor something that it's not that it doesn't exist yet. Sometimes it's higher, right? So the thing is, what's important to understand for 12 house energy is like, the earth plane is first of all a lower vibration so sometimes what they're trying to ground 
is higher vibrational first of all maybe what the earth is currently right so sometimes that's by the time you know it takes time to get that thing sometimes it's also like you have to reach that vibration right so it's really interesting your capricorn man is your anchor that's great <laughs> What does Sagittarius sun and rising in the 12th house mean? You have your rising in the 12th house. Which system are you looking at? Sagittarius sun in the 12th house. That's interesting because maybe like when you were growing up, the father like went off traveling somewhere or maybe he traveled all, all the time or maybe he was like a businessman. Like he was absent in this way because sun in the 12th house can be an absence of a father figure. Also sun in the 12th house. Sometimes these people are kind of closing out a part of their identity in this lifetime, maybe figuring out who they are. Usually the earlier part of the life for the sun in the 12th house person, I do have a video on this on my YouTube channel. It's called Barbara Talks, by the way. So check it out if you guys are new here. But the earlier part of the sun in the 12th house person's life, they're trying to figure out who they are, right? You don't know who you are. Maybe you do a lot of those personality tests. Maybe you do a lot of like, you know, those readings, right? To try to get guidance, you're, like you're looking for a guide. But eventually when we look at the chart, right? It progresses out of sun in the 12th and it goes into sun in the first. And now you have an undertone of a Leo rising. That's what I love about that progression. It progresses. So this is in secondary progressions. You guys can look them up online, type in secondary progressions. It could be AstroSeek or any of the websites. It could even be astro.com. And then it'll tell you where your energies are at now. So you're still a sun in the 12th. Like the original natal chart is still going to be there, but this is now an overlay. So maybe usually around, like it depends on the degrees, but around maybe like the mid twenties to late twenties, it's going to progress out of the 12th house. And you kind of come out of this cloud when you have sun in the 12th house, not knowing who you are, not knowing your identity. So the earlier part of your life is probably going to be a lot of soul searching. No way. He used to travel a lot for work. Oh my gosh. I had a feeling. I'm glad that that's confirmed. Yeah. Sometimes the sun, the sign that you guys have in the sun can tell you about the father as well. Like some personality traits that he may have had. So the sun can tell you about the father. Sometimes Saturn can tell you about the father sometimes. And then in turn, your own masculine energy. So you yourself might like to travel now, for example, or because it is in the 12th house, you might struggle with your own boundaries. Okay. Things like this. Let's see. Yeah, so this is what I mean. Like we all have these energies within us. So when you have sun in the 12th, you could struggle with the identity that we talked about boundaries. You could struggle with a sense of self when you have sun in the 12th house, you know, being a go-getter, going after things, these type of things. Sun and Mercury in the 12th house. I've seen a lot of singers have sun and Mercury in the 12th house or poets or people who are poetic, right? Even if you're writing songs, it's gonna be poetic. You said he has a Capricorn stellium too and is intense and grounding and being, so it's an intense grounding and being too aware of reality. Yeah, sometimes it's nice to see how the energies balance when you manifest the person into your life who in your case is very grounding. Like it's very nice to have that. You said you're literally taking vocal lessons weekly. Yay, you are where you are meant to be. Yeah, sun and Mercury in the 12th house. I've seen a lot of singers have sun and mercury in the 12th house okay mercury in the 12th house is kind of like the poetic aspect of things the 12th house overall is a musical house um it's overall anything to do with like the romanticization of things and life and then you'll go out of that progression right you'll go out of sun in the 12th right and then you progress into sun in the first and this is why you'll see a lot of singers have this because they go into that undertone okay when you have sun in the third it's an undertone of having a leo rising okay so you're now here to perform right you're here to show people something maybe that you've learned or hardships that maybe you ha may have had maybe through your songs and these types of things and then in turn what's also happening energetically and metaphysically you're transmuting energy through your voice okay so you're kind of taking in energy and you're transmuting it through the frequency of your voice as well okay make sure you guys check out my youtube channel it is called barbara talks i'm going to sign off now thanks so much for being here if you guys want your own readings you guys can find that in the tiktok bio or if you guys are on youtube go in the description box below thanks so much and have a nice rest of your evening you're welcome